at first i want to make it clear that we are going to use expo and react native uh, react native is the main library which we use to develop mobile application and exp is the additional tool chain that is use react native behind the scene and also make it easier to develop mobile apps so to install expo we first have to install node.js in our system so if you do not have node.js you just visit the node.js.org and then download the latest version and install in your system then i also recommend you to install yarn it is another package javascript package manager and with npm we can also use yarn alongside and here you can choose operating system and the version and then you can see that how to install yarn in your system and then now comes to the point you have to install the expo so to install expo either you can uh, check out the document in react native or you can directly visit expo.io documentation where both are the same that you have to install expo command line interface so in if you are using mac you have you can type here and if you are using windows powershell then you can use uh, the same way so you just copy this and paste it in your terminal so that means npm install and this dash g means global and expo dash cli so this global means from anywhere in terminal we can use the expo command line interface i already installed in my system so i i'm not going to install it again you just type this and press enter it will be installed to write code we are using visual studio code editor so if you do not have visual studio code editor in your system you should visit this code.visualstore.com and install it in your system i also recommend you to download and install android studio because if you use expo and react native and you want to run your code in emulator then you you can create emulator in android studio and you can run the expo app in android emulator but if you have a uh, android mobile phone that's also okay in that case you do not need this android studio but i recommend that you should install android studio and if you are using mac you should also install the xcode from mac app store in that case you can create simulator that iphone simulator and you can run your app in the iphone simulator but if you are using windows or linux there is no way to use xcode in your system so after successfully install react native now we want to create a project so i am in my mac so i first type pwd present working directory and i am seeing that i am within my desktop demo directory so let's create a project so i have to type expo then i have to write in it and then i have to create a project name so for this project i am going to write hello world and here you see that there are three options now it is showing so initially i choose blank and click enter and now it is saying that you have to give him give a name for the project so i i will be type hello world this will be the project name but in later or any time you can change the name in by uh, modifying the json file and i press again enter and now it is saying that it found yarn in my system so it want to use yarn so i will type y and press enter so the project created if i type cd hello world it will enter in the hello world directory and now i have to type yarn start yarn start and here it will ask for some confirmation or permission you just give access allow and now you will see that in your browser or default browser this type of window will be shown here you can see that run on android device emulator run on ios simulator and a qr code so if you have iphone or android phone you just use your camera and scan this qr code then a expo app will be installed in your phone and you can run the app so in my case i have ios simulator installed so i just click run on ios simulator so it will try to open an ios simulator from my computer so here we are seeing the ios simulator and behind the scene in the console there is also we can see some output
so the project is uh, bundling and after that it will be run in here you see the uh, building javascript bundle a progress is showing in here and also in here so normally this happen for the first time and uh, later when you write or update code it will be more faster and now it is saying that the open up app.js to start working on your app so that means the project is running successfully so now i want to use visual studio code editor to update code so for this reason i create a new tab in my terminal and i will just type code dot so it will open visual studio code editor in my system and i can use the code In case if code dot dot is not works in your machine, you just open the Visual Studio Code Editor and for fi from file and open, you can just select the path and open the code. So here is the app dot js file. This is the main file for our React Native app project. So suppose uh, here it is written that open up app dot js and we can see this thing here. If we want to type change it and we just want to type hello world, you see now it is showing hello world. The main benefit of using React Native is that you can, when you write code or update code, you can immediately see the output. This is a big plus point. I was a long time iPhone application developer using Swift and I develop Android application using Java. In both cases, every time I uh, write code and I have to recompile and upload to my fonts to get the updated status. But using React Native, you don't have to do that. It's really very helpful and very faster. So let's discuss about the code. So at first you will see that in the left there are some directory asset where we put image or sound this kind of thing. Dot expo is the built in library we do not need to handle this and dot uh, node modules is also same we do not need to handle this. We sometimes may check the package.json here we can see that what kind of libraries is installed for this application and if we add new library we can see that within the dependencies and also there is app.json so this this basically the application configuration and when we want to deploy our app in apple store or google play store we need to modify this uh, app.json so we will handle it later and now come at the app.js this is the main entry point of react native application so let's remove all the code and start from scratch so if i save this file you will see that there is a error showing that nothing is okay okay so let's import some file so i have to type import react this class from react package then i want to import view takes this two class from react native package now i want to create a class that would be class app and it should be extended extends from extends react dot component so we are defining a component by defining a class and that class should be extended react component then this class become a component so when you create a custom component in react native you must have to define a function that is render function or render method so within render function i define uh, a return statement return and i will return a custom view so here i am using react native built-in view component and within view component i type i i'm going to use text component and within text component i will type hello world if I save this file, still it will not be it will not work because I did not export this app component. So I can do it different way. So another one way is I can type here export default app and I save this. And you see now it is showing hello world at the top, very top. You see at the top because of this nose, it is not showing perfectly but the common way is use export default is here it is a very common way that we type export default class and then the other thing and if i save you see the same output nothing changed so if you are completely new to javascript or you know very basic javascript you did not use before export or name import you just study there by searching in google or if you want you just write a comment in the video tutorial so that i will create some videos about modern javascript syntax so anyway 
so now i create a component uh, this component is the app component and where i am returning a view component and within the view component i am creating a text component and the text component is showing hello world now let's style this component there are different ways we can apply style in a component so first i want to see you how to apply inline styling so here i have to type style then equal sign then curly braces so this is a text component built in react native component and this style is called props props mean in terms in in short form of properties so that means that in this text component we are passing some additional value that react native will apply in this text component so that that style should be within a javascript object so when you will pass any props or properties you have to put a curly braces after equal sign and now we want to put another style so we have to pass that is an javascript object so we will write another curly braces and here we want to apply margin top 50 comma margin left 50 and if i save you see now the hello world is showing here so this is called inline styling if we do not like to style this way we can just cut this thing and suppose we want to put a variable here const is st text suppose our variable name is st text and we assign this thing in here a javascript object st text and we pass this uh sorry in as i am writing within class i do not have to put any const or let i ha i can just type here this dot st text now you see the same thing is happening here that we define a variable i mean an object javascript object and we just passing that javascript object here another way to give style is that you you have to use the style sheet style sheet class to create style so first import that style sheet style sheet from react native package and now create that style sheet object so we have to type const style so i am creating an styles object now i am using style sheet dot create this function and within this function i will create a object so in this object i am creating another object so the first object name is like this i just cut this thing and i put it in here and here i instead of equal sign i have to put colon because i am creating an object and i have to remove this semicolon as well so now i am uh, moving that style to this styles and st text object and now i save this and here instead of this dot st text i am just passing styles dot st text and now if i save you will see the same thing is happening here so when we should use inline style or when we should external style basically when there is one or two parameter i mean one of two feature you want to apply you may inline that but if you want to reuse something it's better to use style sheet dot create function and uh, create the style within there as an object and use that in the react native component this is the better way if you know css it will be much easier for you to understand the uh, react native styling because the uh, styling is almost similar like css just the second word first character would be in uppercase like in way we use margin dash top and uh, what is the small later but here in react native we are using margin top where t is the capital letter so now your task is to create some more text component bottom of this text component and styling them as your wish so pause the video and let's try so i hope you try to create some component if you did not let's do it with me so I am creating another test component and here I am putting my name is Mahmood and you see it is showing in here because there is no styling so I just put style and type style.sttext 
and it is showing here I will create another style st text name and here I will type uh, font size suppose 30 and here I want to put two style if you want to put two style you just use an array syntax so here I am putting array syntax so I for this text I want to apply both st text style and st text name style so I am typing styles dot st text name style now you see that here uh, this style uh, the margin top 50 and uh, margin left 50 is also applying and this text is now bigger so when you want to apply multiple style you just use the array syntax so this is enough for today in the next video i will discuss more about react component how to define functional component how to define component in class and what is props how we can define multiple props how to access the props and finally i will discuss some more important thing that is state in react component so stay tuned and if you have any problem understanding any of this discussion today just let me know in the comment so thank you for watching